An inertial navigation system is a navigation aid that uses a computer, motion sensors and rotation sensors to continuously calculate via dead reckoning the position, orientation, and velocity of a moving object without the need for external references. It is used on vehicles such as ships, aircraft, submarines, guided missiles, and spacecraft. Other terms used to refer to inertial navigation systems are closely related devices include inertial guidance system, inertial instrument, inertial measurement units and many other variations. Older in systems generally used an inertial platform as the mounting point of the vehicle and the terms are sometimes considered synonymous. Overview Inertial navigation is a self-contained navigation technique in which measurements provided by accelerometers and gyroscopes are used to track the position and orientation of an object relative to a known starting point. Orientation and velocity Inertial measurement units typically contain three orthogonal rate gyroscopes and three orthogonal accelerometers, measuring angular velocity and linear acceleration respectively. By processing signals for these devices it is possible to track the position and orientation of a device. Inertial navigation is used in a wide range of applications including the navigation of aircraft, tactical and strategic missiles, spacecraft, submarines and ships. Recent advances in the construction of microelectromechanical systems have made it possible to manufacture small and light inertial navigation systems. These advances have widened the range of possible applications to include areas such as human and animal motion capture. An inertial navigation system includes at least a computer and a platformer module containing accelerometers, gyroscopes, or other motion sensing devices. The INS is initially provided with its position and velocity from another source accompanied with the initial orientation, and thereafter computes its own updated position and velocity by integrating information received from the motion senses. The advantage of an INS is that it requires no external references in order to determine its position, orientation, or velocity once it has been initialized. An INS can detect a change in its geographic position, a change in its velocity, and a change in its orientation. It does this by measuring the linear acceleration and angular velocity applied to the system. Since it requires no external reference, it is immune to jamming and deception. Inertial navigation systems are used in many different moving objects, including vehicles, such as aircraft, submarines, spacecraft, and guided missiles. However, their cost and complexity place constraints on the environments in which they are practical for use. Gyroscopes measure the angular velocity of the sensor frame with respect to the inertial reference frame. By using the original orientation of the system in the inertial reference frame as the initial condition and integrating the angular velocity, the system's current orientation is known at all times. This can be thought of as the ability of a blindfolded passenger in a car to feel the car turn left and right or tilt up and down as the car ascends, or descends hills. Based on this information alone, the passenger knows what direction the car is facing but not how fast or slow it is moving, or whether it is sliding sideways. Accelerometers measure the linear acceleration of the moving vehicle in the sensor or body frame, but in directions that can only be measured relative to the moving system. This can be thought of as the ability of a blindfolded passenger in a car to feel themselves pressed back into the seat as the vehicle accelerates forward or pulled forward as it slows down and feel themselves pressed down into the seat as the vehicle accelerates up a hill or rise up out of the seat as the car passes over the crest of a hill and begins to descend. Based on this information alone, they know how the vehicle is accelerating 
relative to itself, that is, whether it is accelerating forward, backward, left, right, up or down measured relative to the car, but not the direction relative to the Earth. Since they did not know what direction the car was facing relative to the Earth when they felt the accelerations, however, by tracking both the current angular velocity of the system and the current linear acceleration of the system measured relative to the moving system, it is possible to determine the linear acceleration of the system in the inertial reference frame, performing integration on the inertial accelerations using the correct kinematic equations yields the inertial velocities of the system, and integration again yields the inertial position. In our example, if the blindfolded passenger knew how the car was pointed and what its velocity was before he was blindfolded, and if they are able to keep track of both how the car has turned and how it has accelerated and decelerated since, they can accurately know the current orientation, position, and velocity of the car at any time. Error. All inertial navigation systems suffer from integration drift. Small errors in the measurement of acceleration and angular velocity are integrated into progressively larger errors in velocity, which are compounded into still greater errors in position. Since the new position is calculated from the previous calculated position and the measured acceleration and angular velocity, these errors accumulate roughly proportionally to the time since the initial position was input. Therefore, the position must be periodically corrected by input from some other type of navigation system. The inaccuracy of a good quality navigational system is normally less than 0.6 nautical miles per hour in position and on the order of tenths of a degree per hour in orientation. If navigation systems malfunction, they can send planes off course. Accordingly, inertial navigation is usually used to supplement other navigation systems, providing a higher degree of accuracy than is possible with the use of any single system. For example, if in terrestrial use the inertially tracked velocity is intermittently updated to zero by stopping, the position will remain precise for a much longer time, US called zero velocity update. In aerospace particularly other measurement systems are used to determine ins in accuracies, e.g. the Honeywell laser for inertial navigation systems uses GPS and air data computer outputs to maintain required navigation performance. The navigation error arises with the lower sensitivity of the sensors used. Currently, devices combining different senses are being developed, e.g., attitude and heading reference system, because the navigation error is mainly influenced by the numerical integration of angular rates and accelerations. The pressure reference system was developed to use one numerical integration of the angular rate measurements, estimation theory in general, and Kalman filtering in particular, provide a theoretical framework for combining information from various senses. One of the most common or Alternative senses is a satellite navigation radio, such as GPS which can be used for all kinds of vehicles with direct sky visibility. Indoor applications can use pedometers, distance measurement equipment, or other kinds of position senses. By properly combining the information from an ins and other systems, the errors in position and velocity are stable. Furthermore, ins can be used as a short-term fall back while GPS signals are unavailable, for example when a vehicle passes through a tunnel. History Inertial navigation systems were originally developed for rockets. American rocket pioneer Robert Goddard experimented with rudimentary gyroscopic systems. Dr. Goddard's systems were of great interest to contemporary German pioneers including Wernher von Braun. The systems entered more widespread use with the advent of spacecraft, guided missiles, and commercial airliners. Early German World War II 
two V2 guidance systems combine two gyroscopes and a lateral accelerometer with a simple analog computer to adjust the azimuth for the rocket in flight. Analog computer signals were used to drive four graphite rudders in the rocket exhaust for flight control. The GN and AMP C system for V2 provided many innovations as an integrated platform with closed loop guidance. At the end of the war, von Braun engineered the surrender of 500 of his top rocket scientists, along with plans and test vehicles, to the Americans. They arrived at Fort Bliss, Texas in 1945 under the provisions of Operation Paperclip and were subsequently moved to Huntsville, Alabama, in 1950 where they worked for U.S. Army rocket research programs. In the early 1950s, the U.S. government wanted to insulate itself against over-dependency on the German team for military applications, including the development of a fully domestic missile guidance program. The MIT Instrumentation Laboratory was chosen by the Air Force Western Development Division to provide a self-contained guidance system back up to Convair in San Diego for the new Atlas Intercontinental ballistic missile. The technical monitor for the mid task was a young engineer named Jim Fletcher who later served as the NASA administrator. The Atlas guidance system was to be a combination of an onboard autonomous system and a ground-based tracking and command system. The self-contained system finally prevailed in ballistic missile applications for obvious reasons. In space exploration, a mixture of the two remained. In the summer of 1952, Dr. Richard Batten and Dr. J. Holcomb Hal Laning Jr. researched computational-based solutions to guidance, and undertook the initial analytical work on the Atlas Inertial Guidance in 1954. Other key figures at Convair were Charlie Bossett, the chief engineer, and Walter Schwedetsky, head of the guidance group. Schwedetsky had worked with Werner von Braun at Pienemuen during World War II. The initial Delta guidance system assessed the difference in position from a reference trajectory. A velocity to be gained calculation is made to correct the current trajectory with the objective of driving VGO to zero. The mathematics of this approach were fundamentally valid, but dropped because of the challenges in accurate inertial guidance and analog computing power. The challenges faced by the Delta efforts were overcome by the Q-system of guidance. The Q-system's revolution was to bind the challenges of missile guidance in the matrix Q. The Q-matrix represents the partial derivatives of the velocity with respect to the position vector. A key feature of this approach allowed for the components of the vector cross-product to be used as the basic autopilot rate signals, a technique that became known as cross-product steering. The Q-system was presented at the first technical Symposium on Ballistic Missiles held at the Ramo Wooldridge Corporation in Los Angeles on June 21 and 22, 1956. The Q system was classified information through the 1960s. Derivations of this guidance are used for today's missiles. Guidance in human spaceflight. In Feb of 1961 NASA awarded MIT a contract for preliminary design study of a guidance and navigation system for Apollo. MIT and the Delco Electronics DIV of General Motors Corp rewarded the joint contract for design and production of the Apollo guidance and navigation systems for the command module and the lunar module. Delco produced the IMAS for these systems, Colsmin Instrument Corp produced the optical systems, and the Apollo guidance computer was built by Raytheon under subcontract. For the Space Shuttle, an open-loop guidance was used to guide the shuttle from liftoff until solid rocket booster 
after separation. After SRB separation the primary space shuttle guidance is named PEG. PEG takes into account both the Q system and the predictor corrector attributes of the original Delta system. Although many updates to the shuttle's navigation system had taken place over the last 30 years, the guidance core of the shuttle GN and AMP C system had evolved little. Within a man system, there is a human interface needed for the guidance system. As astronauts of the customer for the system, many new teams were formed that touch GN and AMP C as it is a primary interface to fly the vehicle aircraft inertial guidance. One example of a popular INS for commercial aircraft was the Delco Carousel, which provided partial automation of navigation in the days before complete flight management systems became commonplace. The carousel allowed pilots to enter nine waypoints at a time, and then guided the aircraft from one waypoint to the next using an INS to determine aircraft position and velocity. Boeing Corporation subcontracted the Delco Electronics DIV of General Motors to design and build the first production carousel systems for the early models models of the 747 aircraft. The 747 utilized three carousel systems operating in concert for reliability purposes. The carousel system and derivatives thereof were subsequently adopted for use in many other commercial and military aircraft. The USAF C-141 was the first military aircraft to utilize the carousel in a dual system configuration, followed by the C-5A which utilized the triple INS configuration, similar to the 747. The KC-135 fleet was fitted with a dual carousel system that was aided by a Doppler radar. AARINC characteristic 704 defines the IRS used in commercial air transport. Inertial navigation systems in detail. INSs contain inertial measurement units which have angular and linear accelerometers. Some IMS include a gyroscopic element. Angular accelerometers measure how the vehicle is rotating in space. Generally, there is at least one sensor for each of the three axes, pitch, yaw and roll. Linear accelerometers measure non-gravitational accelerations of the vehicle. Since it can move in three axes, there is a linear accelerometer for each axis. A computer continually calculates the vehicle's current position. First, for each of the six degrees of freedom, it integrates over time the sensed acceleration together with an estimate of gravity to calculate the current velocity. Then it integrates the velocity to calculate the current position. Inertial guidance is difficult without computers. The desire to use inertial guidance in the Minuteman missile and Project Apollo drove early attempts to miniaturize computers. Inertial guidance systems are now usually combined with satellite navigation systems through a digital filtering system. The inertial system provides short-term data, while the satellite system system corrects accumulated errors of the inertial system. An inertial guidance system that will operate near the surface of the Earth must incorporate Schuler tuning so that its platform will continue pointing towards the center of the Earth as a vehicle moves from place to place.